Let's now talk about your market potential and how to size it. Let's first think about even why to size the market. There's the obvious thing about quantifying and validating the business opportunity relative to the resources required to exploit it. But you also need to paint a compelling and defensible picture for a whole variety of stakeholders, yourself being one of them. But you'll also be talking to investors, potential partners and collaborators, customers and suppliers, and market analysts and the press. All of these people need to be convinced that you have something worthwhile pursuing. Internally, you're going to think about a little bit about using market size information to prioritize your customer segments and your market segments. There isn't a lot of point in going after a very, very small market unless it's a very low cost market to enter. On the other hand, if you have a large market that's also relatively easy to enter, then that's obviously a first priority. You also are going to be using market size information to plan out the timing of your business and uh, when you're going to do what related to resources, related to how you're going to price the business, how you're going to structure your revenue model, as well as understanding your business relative to your competition. Fundraising is an obvious use. Your investors are going to want to know that they will be able to reap strong returns from your business idea based on the size of the market, the number of people you can potentially sell to. And then finally, you want to be measuring your progress against something. How quickly or how effectively are you actually penetrating that market? One way to think about market size is to go back to the idea of these four different market segments. There's the total available market or the total addressable market. There's your served available market your target market, and then the first market you're going to enter, the beachhead market. You should be able to quantify each of them based on their characteristics, how many users or, uh, or organizations are in that market, and then how much money are they spending currently or could they be spending on your product or service. That's great, but where does all this information come from? It's a guesstimate. One of my favorite words, and my engineering and science students' least favorite words. There is no precision to this. This is about taking some basic pieces of information and extrapolating from them. And the whole idea here is to have defensible logic. You cannot be precise about the future. What you are doing is developing a so-called pro forma based on your best information that you have at the moment. In order to do that, you'll be working with librarians and other sources of secondary information. And one, and you'll find yourself in often beautiful places like the James J. Hill Library in St. Paul or other libraries around uh, the nation and the world even who do have amazing resources that are often shared across the institutions. Let's think about the pieces. First of all, calculating how many customers you have. Again, across these four pieces, the total available market, the served available market, the target, and the beachhead. You know your customer archetypes. You've done that through your customer discovery, through getting out of the building. Now it's time to quantify that and, and researching it across these different levels. Again, working through Industry databases don't just depend on Google, which is only the free information. The libraries can access the paid information, some of which can be very, very expensive. Then you're going to think about how much money is this segment currently spending or could they be spending? You've already identified how many customers you've got. How much are they spending now? Um, and you can be thinking about this as a sort of an equation. You've identified your customer segment, 
and it might be some proportion of a broader customer segment. And you can multiply that by the number, the dollars spent in that market segment. Or you might simply say, how many customers do I think are out there? How much are they spending per purchase? And therefore, next step is how many purchases are they making? This leads to a total number. The point is not, again, to be right, because you can't be right about the future. The point is to be logical, to have a logic that extends from a few basic pieces of information into something uh, that you can make a directional decision about. And you'll be doing this exercise across all four levels of your market. One way to do this is to use a tool, to basically lay it all out. What's my market, my total available market? Describe it a little. Think about how many customers you have. Think about how much money they're worth and then repeat that exercise with each size of the uh, segments. Another thing to think about is that markets are not stagnant. Trends are going to change the picture. So if you estimate your market as of today, you may be either over or estimating it, overestimating it or underestimating it based on what else is going on. For instance, the college age population in the US is currently decreasing. If you are planning a product or service that goes into uh, to college students, then you would have to really think about, well, uh, if this is a Democrat, demographic that's decreasing, what will I be doing after I've gone into that market segment? Because I can't depend on growth from that. On the other hand, there may be demographics or technologies or uh, regulatory changes that are driving increases in the total market. And then you have the wind at your back and it's a whole lot easier to grow the business. Keep in mind that revenue growth is not just a function of how quickly you penetrate the market. It's also a function of how fast your market is growing. And that's the easier part of the equation.